just a bit rocky. And I'm gonna show you some of the damage. Dolphins coming into Nassau. <laughs> well, good afternoon, everybody. The last we left you, a boat had crashed into us. That's right, I'm not even joking. Not a dinghy, not a sailboat that dragged anchor. A full-size, like 28-foot, power boat huge things you know you see them cruising around all the time they're doing like 35 knots so here's the summary of what happened i don't know how i said it yesterday but here's the summary so i was downstairs minding my own business reading and then i heard an almighty bang as something hit the boat no idea what it was i ran up and like i said huge 28 30 foot one of those massive power boat things that um rip around at high speed you know they got the little bimini's on top um, and I come out and there's one of these boats literally like midship banging into me side on bang bang and there's a family scrambling around there's two kids there's a, uh, the grandparents the parents um, and they're all like trying to clamber onto the like hold on to our boat um, it was absolutely crazy um, obviously they had no fenders out or anything so their boat's just banging up against it's windy yesterday it's wavy um, I don't know why anybody in their right mind was out on a powerboat yesterday anyways. So it turns out what's happened. So these guys have rented one of these big powerboats and they're cruising through this cut over here, top speed, and instead of going along the front of the beach on the side of the anchorage like everybody else has, they've decided that, hey, it's super safe and a really good idea to travel at like 35, 40 knots through a ridiculously crowded anchorage full of sailboats. Um, so that was super awesome and really happy about that. Good thing there's nobody swimming. So the way I understand it is they then lost hydraulic steering. Um, I'm still a bit suspect on this because once the boat was stopped, steering seemed to still be working okay. So I don't know. But anyways, they've said they've lost steering um, and they are heading straight for our boat, nose on, doing ridiculous speed through the anchorage. Um, fortunately, the guy driving the boat pulled the power off and chucked it in a reverse and killed the engine, I don't know how. But they still drifted into us. I'd say they're probably doing like maybe three knots by the time they, or four knots by the time they came to our boat. Um, grandpa on the boat, like superhuman strength, he jumped up on the bow and obviously stuck his arms out. Um, they just sort of hit the end of our boat with the nose of their boat. And then the wind took the boat, swung it around, and almost then they were just banging up against the side of our boat. Now, you know, th this boat had metal rub rails on it. Um, so, you know, it doesn't take a lot of contact to start, you know, gouging the gel coat on a sailboat. Um, so yeah, so that's essentially what happened. And then of course they didn't know what to do. They're holding onto our boat. Um, they don't know what to do next to their boats banging into ours. And I come out and I can't believe what I'm seeing. Um, obviously first thing I ask is make sure everybody's okay. They are. And then the next thing I do, I, I tell them to throw their bloody anchor and like push off and throw their anchor in the water. Um, because they're just banging up against our boat. So fortunately they got their anchor in the water and the anchor sort of behind us. Family was okay, um, their boat was okay. I've got some scrapes on my boat. We're gonna sort it out with the, uh, with the renters and the rental company. Um, we'll hopefully have an update on that for you uh, later on. Um, but yeah, so that, that was the traumatic incident that happened. And I'll tell you what, like I'm not even kidding. I phoned Nat and she could just tell in my voice and she didn't ask me what had happened or what's wrong the first thing she said was who hit us which i could kind of understand because i'm tired of boats hitting us we got hit three times in yeah three times in the San Blas islands because of numpties and now we get hit by a, a, a high-speed power boat um, I just don't know what's next. Um, you know, ultimately that incident could have been horrific. Um, you know, thank God they didn't run anybody over in the anchorage. Um, luckily the guy was quick enough to pull the power off on the boat because if he had to hit our boat doing 30, 35, 40 knots, I mean, he would have punched a hole in the side of our boat. He had the kids sitting in the bow. I mean, they would have gone flying, you know, oh, don't even want to think how bad that accident could have been um, so which goes to show you like 
don't rip through crowded anchorages full of sailboats at 35, 40 knots with these boats. I mean, you can't, you can't see people. It's dangerous. It's very, very dangerous. And people get, people get hurt. But there's a swimmer that could pop up, you know, people swimming behind their sailboats. So, um, you know, and they were coming very, very close. Our friends who are anchored just over here, um, they passed within like 10 feet of their boat doing 35 knots. You know, he just ha could have been down giving us hull scrub and come up and off his head goes, you know, I mean, so yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna take you around the side of the boat now and I'm gonna show you some of the damage. Hopefully the camera picks it up. We're kind of losing our light a bit. It's pretty, pretty cloudy today. Um, but yeah, let's give it a crack and go check it out. All right, so we're gonna come around the side of the boat here. And let's see if we can have a look. Let's see if we can have a look at some of the damage. See if I can show it to you here. All right, so the first noticeable marks. So you can see we have this gel coat chunk. So you can see it's like longer than my hand. There's another good chunk right there out of the gel coat. So that's sort of, that's obviously when this, when the stern came around and the boat was banging up against the side here. And it just started, you know, the wind was dragging it down the side of our boat, just grinding into the gel coat. Couldn't believe it. So you got this one here, which I was very, very happy wasn't worse because it's right next to the window. And that one could have been quite bad. So there's another one right there, just above the window. So we got very lucky with the window there. That could have been a smashed window. So it's because the rub, the, their rub rail was kind of even with our windows, um, as you can see. So, and then there's some more up here. This is the bad one. This is the bad one up here. This is when they hit the nose. So you can see there we got a chunk, chunk, chunk. There's three chunks there from these guys. So those, those are obviously the worst ones. Um, we got some marks here on the bootstripe. So we got some damage just to the bootstripe here. There is some more marks along here somewhere. Um, where is it? Another, another chunk right there in the gel coat. The problem with these um, these gouges is that they're they're pretty deep into the gel coat. They're not really long, luckily, but they're you know they're definitely like one or two millimeters into the gel coat, which is gonna take a bit of work to you know fill and buff and all that. So yeah, not great. So. Yeah, that's sort of the, you know, the first look at all the, all the damage. Um, not too bad. Like I said, the nose of the boat obviously took the most of the uh, impact. Um, <laughs> actually, I think, I think the grandfather took most of the impact. If he hadn't bloody sacrificed his body, I think it could have been a lot worse. So, oh, just jump back on. But yeah, so... That was our uh, excitement for yesterday. Sorry we didn't update you yesterday. Uh, it was dark by the time we got everything finished. Um, after we gone in, spoke to the guys and sort of tr trying to find a path forward, so. But anyways, I'm gonna get the boat ready because tomorrow morning early, I'm making a run up to Norman K. It's about 32 miles from here. Um, on my way to Nassau, because in two days, that's coming. You. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. It's time to pick up the hook. It's the next morning, and we're heading to I think Norman's Key. If we make good time, maybe we'll go a little bit further. There's another key just past it. 
But anyways, you've seen me pick up the hooker many times. I'm gonna pick it up and we're gonna get underway. And we are gonna travel up the inside on the sound here of the Exumas. That made totally no sense, but I'm super tired. I've had my coffee, but I'm not woken up yet. All right, let's get going. We've got a powerboat here coming straight at me. I wonder if he's gonna change course. There we go, I think he was on autopilot and he's just realized and changed course at the last second. Wow. All right guys, I think I, <coughs> pardon me, have a fish. I'm gonna pull it in. I just hope it's not a barracuda. Uh, I got some gloves I got from Total Boat. They're meant for work, but I'm gonna use them to pull in the line. All right, here we go, I'll show you. down all set gonna chill here just for tonight and then another 37 miles to Nassau tomorrow um, that was like the dodgiest entrance ever um, it's all catamarans obviously luckily we have a shoulder draft keel so uh, we squeaked in just fine there's a couple of moments there where I was like when I went to 5.6 um, but then I also have an offset so really I actually had about a foot and a half underneath the keel so all sweet anyways it's absolutely beautiful i'm gonna jump in check the anchor have a swim and make some lunch i am so hungry all right guys hey, good morning everyone today is another day i've got about 38 miles to go from norman's k where i am anchored now to nassau so i've just made a cup of coffee and then i'm gonna pick up the hook and out. All right, let's get this day done and dusted. <sighs> All right, so a lot of people ask us about our infurling mane. I love it, it's amazing. But normally when I do it with Natalie, one of us will do the out haul and one of us will do the in haul, whether, whether we're taking it in or out. It's just easier to have two people. But when one of us is on our own and we're trying to operate it, this is generally how we do it. Um, I'll winch whatever one needs to be pulled or taken in, and then whatever one's releasing, I'll have a double wrap and I'll control it with my other hand. It's really quite easy. Here we go, we're gonna put the main out. So we pop the clutch for the in-haul, because we're gonna let the main out. And I'm gonna winch the out-haul. While I'm doing that, I like to watch the sail so I know if I'm gonna put a reef sail, how much I'm putting out. But I'm gonna go full main, but I wanna control the speed at which the main comes out. I don't want it to just slam. Also, I wanna make sure as I'm taking it out that I'm controlling how much belly of the sail goes out as I'm winching. So I wanna keep it kind of flat so that I don't make more work for myself later. All right, let's go. So you can see I'm slowly releasing in this head, crack it on this one. Or if you like, you can switch it up and do it the other way. Maybe you're right-handed. Perfect. How 
I put the main out. Just a bit rocky. <laughs> Nassau, we're almost there. Another half hour. Woo! Oh my god! Dolphins coming into Nassau! As you can see, we have some calcification. 